Hey, rich friends, it's your girl Cha Cha reporting live from The Money Mantra, and we're back with another Forex education video. I really created this channel to help as many people as possible become independent and profitable traders. So, if that is on your bucket list, make sure that you do subscribe. If you get to the end of this video and you find that it helps you in any way, make sure you leave me a comment and let me know how it was helpful. And you never know who else it could help also. Um, if you love it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share this video with another trader. Um, and if you need more help beyond the videos, you can register for personal mentorship or follow me on TradingView. And that information is down below in my description box. So in today's quick video, we are going to be doing a trade breakdown which is one of my favorite things to do simply because it helps us to look at what played out in the trade, whether it was right or wrong. So the trade we're going to be looking at today is from USD CAD. And this was something that I dropped during NFP week in December of 2023. Um, I suggested a buy at market execution or a buy limit at this price. I am trying to get out of the habit of giving everybody a stop loss because people trade on different time frames and it really is up to you but I did give a TP1 and a TP2 um, of 40 pips and also 80 pips so a one to one and a one to two risk to reward ratio so I'm actually going to back this trade up um, and I'm going to break down why I decided to take it and what actually happened in this trade um, but spoiler alert TP1 and TP2 were hit so first and foremost, I did put the screen in replay mode just so that we can review the trade. The first thing that I noticed um, before the week had actually started, um, and I may have to go back a little further. So the first thing I noticed before the week had actually started was in the previous week, the market had hit a significant stop. And usually when it hits a significant stop like this, whether it's going down or going up, that usually signals a change in the direction that the market wants to go. So once I saw that this was happening on a weekly time frame, I decided that I was going to um, set some pending orders for USCAD buys. Now, in addition to that, I also noticed that my momentum indicator was facing up. And for me, it's pretty simple. If I'm using line indicators like this, if they're facing up, it aligns with the market going up. And if the lines are facing down, it aligns with the market going down. Now we can just look at two examples of that here. We can see the market hit a stop. We can see the market was going up. We can also see that our momentum was going up as well as our stochastic, which is this indicator with the blue and orange line at the bottom. So once I noticed these things, I decided that I was going to be on the side of the buyers for the week. I also noticed that my stochastic was above 20, which is a very key level when you want to buy. For me, the stochastic has three significant levels. There's the 20, there's the 50, and there's the 80. What you'll notice is that when the stochastic is going down, again, the market is selling, but when it crosses back up above this 20 line, that's usually a signal for me that the market is going to go up. We can see it here. The market crosses back above the 20 line the market goes up. We can see it here. Now, another significant level on the stochastic is the 80 line, which is here. And you'll notice when the market crosses back down below the 80 line, it's usually reflective of a sell that's happening. So I noticed that my candles, again, they were going up right after tapping into this demand zone, right? Demand is a place in the market that tends to have a lot of buyers. We can see that the market came down to this area before, and then it went back up. It came close to the area and it went back up. It came in the area. So I assume that it was going to go back up. 
just based on those indicators. So I have the candle in the demand zone. If it was a sell, it will be a supply zone. So I have candles in the demand zone. I have my momentum facing up. And I also have my stochastic crossed above the 20 line. So we're going to go ahead and play out this trade. And we're going to see what actually happened based off of those small indicators that we had. Uh, we're going to take it back to our entry candle. We're going to look at this again on the four hour time frame. And we can see here, this was my profit level for a TP1 and TP2. And this was my stop loss level. So we see candles in the demand zone. We see our momentum line is going down for now, but we also know what we just saw on the weekly chart. We also have our lines very close to crossing above 20. And when we play it out, this is what happened in the trade. TP1 was hit and TP2 was hit as well. So I follow a very simple process when it comes to trading. Uh, these are the indicators that I use um, in addition to the EMAs, but I didn't use the EMAs in this case. I just went simply based off of price action and that worked in my favor because price action is extremely important. So I really hope that this video was helpful and that you guys learned something today. I do want to know about it. Let me know in the comments. And if you do have any questions, feel free to leave those below as well. So until next time, returns.